had an interview in Nepal on TV, mm -hmm. and um, there you were describing this platform as an infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And by infrastructure, you mean it can be used for, apart from digital payments as Correct. well. What kind of other things can we use this platform for? Well, uh, with uh, uh, the uh, country like Nepal, mm -hmm. where uh, young children die uh, uh, very young, uh, so for them, to keep the medical record is a first step. And at the moment in Nepal, that uh, the hospital don't keep the record. They ha are going to uh, uh, write some report in paper, and the patient is going to bring it uh, to their home. And the patients tend to lose them, right? So you, have to, uh, you don't have a, a proper system in place. If somebody like Nepal is going to introduce our system, the old record or medical record can store in uh, 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 multiple servers and you are getting the uh, private key which you can pass it to different uh, hospital whenever you go to for example if you go to japanese hospital again japanese hospital can unlock the key for the medical record so they don't go through the usual sort of procedure of the testing which is costly um you also um bring up Estonia as an example mm -hmm. um, who has gone through this digital transformation mm -hmm. um, but I actually don't know that much about um, the processes that Estonia went through and how long it took and what this transformation actually was about could you explain mm -hmm. what it was for the citizen mm -hmm. from point of view yeah. so uh, if you uh, google X road Estonia mm -hmm. there's a, a, at least 20 services they have been already digitalized and uh, uh, in a nutshell uh, it's like uh, you don't really go to anymore to the uh, 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 Kuyakusho, uh, the local principal offices mm -hmm. because that can be done everything paperwork can be done in digitalized mm -hmm. and you don't even go to the uh, driving license center uh, uh, to take a picture you can do it online and you don't really go to the voting center you can do voting on the smartphone so these are the things which Estonia has uh, already established. I think it started probably around 20 years ago. I, I'm not sure. Uh, you can just Google it and you can check. But first prime minister, after uh, they have uh, become independent, after the uh, Soviet Union has collapsed, mm -hmm. they become independent from Russia. So there is always tension between Russia and them. And the first prime minister, who was an uh, IT geek, uh, he really wanted to make every uh, uh, the best uh, uh, possible digitalized economy because uh, uh, for the Estonian it's a matter of time if they allow any kind of uh, uh, sentiment and then uh, Russians are going to take over so they want to uh, they have been this prime minister has been thinking about digitalization of country is one way that uh, people can escape anywhere so mm -hmm. even that uh, some of the land has been occupied by Russians, they still can continue as a, as Estonians. Wow. Jumping way into the future, when, for example, if all money has been digitalized, um, what would actually happen to all the paper banknotes and the coins that are already out? Because I know that some, quite a lot of banknotes that are out, they can't be recycled because of the type of material they use, but there's going to be like all this banknotes that's not going to be used anymore. What's going to actually happen to that, like physically? Well, physically, uh, those uh, uh, coins and uh, paper money, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to be like old sort of paper coin and uh, uh, paper, mm -hmm. some of them is going to be uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, collected. Yeah. Yeah, antique shops, mm -hmm. and uh, but most of them is going to go uh, 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 to the central bank and then uh, man mantelize or oh. sort of bond or I don't know what uh -huh. they are doing. But the point is that uh, 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 it's uh, um, paper uh, money circulation is waste of resources. Yeah. Where, uh, as I have explained to another uh, interview that uh, Boston Consulting has reported a few years ago that to uh, keep the cash society in Japan cost about 2 trillion yen, which is uh, quite a waste every year. Yeah. And the digitalized uh, uh, currency, the beauty is that you 
use existing uh, system. You have no extra cost of uh, capital investment. Mm -hmm. And so the difference is just the uh, uh, energy cost. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty. And the energy cost is much easier. Well, yeah. in our case, yeah, in if you're using the blockchain, it's a oh, huge. Yeah. In the interview in Nepal, you said that because many people have a smartphone already, and especially with the internet, people are going to be able to have education from the smartphone. They don't have to necessarily go to school. Um, what do you think would happen to the role of a school um, in the future when, like for now, example in England they have very expensive private schools yes. are normal schools going to be like that or what would a school be for if people can take education from us yes so uh, I think that uh, I don't know what kind of schools or each school need to think about what is uh, how they can keep or attracting uh, good uh, students right so that's not my area what I'm interested in is that education, the concept of education, must be changing rapidly. So for young children, for those people who are just now born, it is easier for them to need to be learned for the next 100 years. In our uh, uh, age, I'm 60 years old, in Japan, the most people think that your education is going to end either 18 years old or 22 years old, and the people don't learn. But this is because that learning at school is a pain. That's why that people stop learning. But now with YouTube platform and other platform, I think that some clever people must be thinking to educate people with fun. And once you have such kind of education, the people are continuing to learn until they die. So that's, I think, is one of the major uh, uh, theme which school need to focus. So rather that the children is going to be sad when the major uh, holidays, summer holidays or or Christmas holiday ends, it is rather they are going to be happy to go back to school. So the school should be fun. <laughs> oh, that um, brings, that's a good point, because what do you think is the difference between the education in Japan and in UK? Uh, it's totally different. Yeah. And I think that, uh, I don't know which one is better, but uh, for us, when uh, we are thinking about our children's education, when the, uh, the first uh, child is going to go to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to a number of uh, our kindergarten interview. We went to for the open day for these schools. And I think that what they have been saying, the message is implicitly at least, that in Japan, that um, everybody tried to try to get into Tokyo University. That's also their, their role, or just one alternative, small alternative might be you are going to get their children to go to K O Yoshisha and they're going to go, don't worry about uh, uh, competition. So one or the other, that's very limited option. In the UK, that as you know, that uh, now it's the public education uh, system is quite uh, uh, sort of, we can't really say it's good, but private uh, uh, education, some of them you have to pay a lot, but you can get a lot from them for, and so you can have an individuality, you can go where you can uh, enjoy much better than in Japan. In Japan, you are trying to move everybody in the same speed, but in the UK, they are trying to encourage, you, if you have uh, good at art, they are going to encourage you to be growing in the art rather than sort of spending other uh, subjects which you don't like. That's what we found. And what, that's what our children like. Um, have any of your children um, studied in Japan? Yes. Uh, my first uh, daughter uh, was here until she was fourth year grade, fourth, fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And so she can compare. And now she thinks that uh, 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 the fact that she moved from Japan and the UK at that uh, fourth grade was great because she can uh, become, she, she's now a complete bilingual. Mm -hmm. So, so she thinks she's lucky. And the second daughter, she went to England when she was uh, uh, five. Uh, and she thinks she's lucky too. So, so I think it's good. Um, what kind of education is there in the UK about um, financial literacy for children? Because I'm aware that in Japan, they don't really teach much about mm. money or financial literacy to children. Mm. 
and um, if we can bring some of this back to Japan, mm. like what can parents actually mm. teach inside mm. the house? Mm. Because it's going to be a bit difficult to change the school. Yeah. Like what kind of education do you have? Well, in, the, in fact, in school, uh, mm. they don't really teach any sort of financial literacy in the UK too. Mm. Uh, as you just pointed out, it is a family atmosphere which the parents are, are freely talk about the financial market or equity or in, they are interested, generally interested in uh, uh, self-sustainability or financing and making investment. So that's the difference uh, between uh, uh, here in Japan and uh, there in the UK. Uh, here in Japan, many parents believe that uh, investment is dangerous things to think or they, they have some kind of uh, 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 bad feeling about making money. So the, uh, the, uh, in Japan, it's very rarely that parents are talking about how to make money to their children. But in the UK, that uh, you can enjoy talking about how to make money uh, among the families. So. so would you say that maybe a good starting point would be to talk about money, that it's not a bad thing? That is, yeah. Correct. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, making money is not a bad thing. Yeah. It's, uh, to, to me, it's just like one of the sports. It's a, a global competition. And if you don't really have to be, let's say, the professional boxer, but it is interesting to, uh, let's, let's say, play tennis from time to time, you don't really have to be a professional. You don't have to be making billions. But if you have a couple of million dollars, that's uh, quite helpful in your uh, thinking and you can enjoy a living. If you are always uh, 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 need to work uh, environment where you need to really have to work and then the stress level is, becomes too high.